Dear people of God, welcome to the Liturgy of the Word, Saturday after Ash Wednesday. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, look with compassion on our weakness and ensure us your protection by stretching forth the right hand of your majesty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah The Lord says this, If you do away with the yoke, the clenched fist, the wicked word, if you give your bread to the hungry and relief to the oppressed, your light will rise in the darkness and your shadows become like noon. The Lord will always guide you, giving you relief in desert places. He will give strength to your bones and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water, whose waters never run dry. You will rebuild the ancient ruins, build up on the old foundations. You will be called Breach Mender, Restorer of Ruined Houses. If you refrain from trampling the Sabbath and doing business on the holy day, if you call the Sabbath delightful and the day sacred to the Lord honourable, if you honour it by abstaining from travel, from doing business and from gossip, then shall you find your happiness in the Lord, and I will lead you triumphant over the heights of the land. I will feed you on the heritage of Jacob your father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The Word of the Lord Show me, Lord, your way, so that I may walk in your truth. Turn your ear, O Lord, and give answer, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my life, for I am faithful. Save the servant who trusts in you. Show me, Lord, your way, so that I may walk in your truth. You are my God. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I cry to you, all the day long. Give joy to your servant, O Lord, for to you I lift up my soul. Show me, Lord, your way, so that I may walk in your truth. O Lord, you are good and forgiving, full of love to all who call. Give heed, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the sound of my voice. Show me, Lord, your way, so that I may walk in your truth. Glory to you, O Christ, you are the Word of God. Harden not your hearts today, but listen to the voice of the Lord. Glory to you, O Christ, you are the Word of God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus noticed a tax collector, Levi by name, sitting by the customs house, and said to him, Follow me. And leaving everything, he got up and followed him. In his honour, Levi had a great reception in his house, and with them at table, was a large gathering of tax collectors and others. The Pharisees and the scribes complained to his disciples and said, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus said to them in reply, It is not those who are well who need the doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the virtuous, but sinners to repentance. The Gospel of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, 
The commandment by Jesus, come follow me, would have come as a great surprise not only to Matthew, the tax collector, but also to the people in general, especially the religious leaders. They were certainly upset because the choice of Matthew by Jesus certainly went against the societal expectation and religious traditions, simply because Matthew was considered as a social outcast and sinner by society. And further, Matthew worked for the Roman occupiers, considered as their sworn enemy. What made Jesus choose Matthew over the learned and pious religious leaders? Do you think that Jesus had favorites in his mind? The fact is, the little ones like Matthew were humble persons who responded to the commands and teachings of Jesus, whereas the religious leaders refused to accept Jesus and only saw Jesus as a threat and troublemaker. The religious leaders, in fact, were threatened by the presence of Jesus and tried many ways to trap him so as to find ways to get rid of him. What was truly amazing was the conversion of Matthew, who left his old way of life as a tax collector to step into the unknown and follow the footsteps of Jesus. The encounter of Jesus caused a powerful impact in Matthew's life, that he threw a party and invited his friends, the rejects, outcasts and sinners, to join in the celebrations. What then shocked the religious leaders even more was that Jesus was able to mingle freely with an undesirable lot and have table fellowship with such persons. In this way, Jesus revealed the love and compassionate face of God the Father for his people and has come to heal the sick and wounded as a divine healer. Jesus was bringing about the kingdom of God that welcomes everyone and excludes no one, as every person, like you and me, is made in the image and likeness of God. We have begun the Lenten season where we are called to do our interior spring cleaning, to welcome Jesus into our hearts and lives in preparation for the coming Easter. And so the question is, what are the obstacles and burdens that we are still clinging on and unable to let go in our lives? Jesus came as a divine healer to heal and liberate us from our sins, brokenness and woundedness. Indeed, we have the Scriptures, the Word of God, and the sacraments, especially the Eucharist, to help us rise above our weaknesses, burdens and pains. Otherwise, we will continue to remain as a prisoner in the quicksand of our past bitterness, blockages, burdens and pains, because we are unable to let go of the past and hang on to the sins of hurts and unforgiveness. The fact is, we cannot heal ourselves, but it is only through the healing touch and graces of the Lord that we can liberate ourselves to see our inner beauty as God's beloved. As we become liberated and healed from our pains and woundedness, we can then reach out to the many Matthews out there whose lives can be confusing, messy and complicated, so that these individuals can experience a glimmer of hope and meaning in their lives and then move forward in their lives. The conversion of Matthew, considered as a nobody and a stranger by his society, is a good starting point for you and me as we begin our Lenten journey in this season of Lent. The ashes that we receive on Ash Wednesday speaks of our commitment to renew our hearts and lives as we look forward with hope to the celebration of Easter. Let us now turn to God our Heavenly Father, our loving and compassionate Father revealed by Jesus, because we are His beloved, and we pray in this special prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us pray. Abide graciously, O Lord, with your people, who have touched the sacred mysteries, that no dangers may bring affliction to those who trust in you, their protector, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you and your family members, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your words, actions, and convictions. Thanks be to God.